So now let's talk about how you figure out what the closest prior art is to your invention. Now, prior art can exist in many forms. It could be products that are out there in use on the market. It could be things that have been published in various forms. And it could also be in the form of patents, patents that exist um, going back to the beginning of the patent system and even what they call patent application publications, which aren't patents, but they've been published by the patent office. The, the point is, there's a variety of places that you could look for prior art. Now, when I say you look, um, what you'd always want to do is start looking yourself for prior art. So the places you would look yourself is where you would commonly look if you were looking for any product you might want to buy. So let's say searching around the internet for similar products searching stores. So prior art can exist in, in many different forms, including it could be products that actually already exist and are out there, and it could be patents that are buried in the patent record but have never really seen the light of the marketplace. So with regard to the first category, things that exist in the marketplace, I'm assuming that you've already looked around and haven't found anything that's similar. Um, with regard to patents though, it's not so easy to find the closest prior art. You know, patents go back to the beginning of the patent system, or said differently, uh, patents, even from the very beginning of the patent system, can be relevant to the patentability of your invention. Searching for the closest patents to your invention, though, isn't always the easiest thing. There's some resources available on the internet that help you see some of the patents that might be close to your field, or close to your invention. But to actually find the closest, sometimes they'll give you a full sense of security. Sometimes they'll show you some, which just give you enough to have you believe that you've found the closest. And the truth is, there'll be something closer. Something which would get in the way of you getting a patent. Something that would change the, the approach or the way in which you apply for a patent if you only knew about it. The problem is that the various resources that you can get to through the internet are not really set up to get you the best prior art. So how do you search for things on the internet? You use words. You put in words which you think are probably going to describe a website that you're looking for on the internet. So you type in something like hamburger restaurant and up come a lot of websites that use those words, hamburger and restaurant. But now when it comes to an invention, in particular patented inventions, there's lots of different terminology that might have been used when describing that invention. So imagine you have a can opener that has uh, a special type of handle. And so you type in the words can opener. And, and in some of these patent databases, you might come up with a whole bunch of can openers. And you might look through that and, and see that there is nothing that actually is just like your invention and believe that, hey, there is a significant difference between my invention and the prior art. And therefore, I can go ahead with this project. The problem is, what if someone had a can opener that had that same type of handle as you, but they didn't call it a can opener? They call it a container opener or they called it a device for opening metal containers. It wouldn't appear in the search that you did on the internet using descriptive words. So this is one of the main problems why even professionals that try to do patent searching on the internet, and I personally don't believe that it's wise to do, and there are actually plenty of professionals that do internet searches um, for patents, and, and I think I've just explained to you why that's really a poor practice but it exists. Even when professionals do it, it's still not the right way to find the closest prior art because things can simply exist and use different words. Um, and the only way to search for things effectively online is using words. So the most effective way to search for prior art is actually to do what's called a classification search where what we're doing is not looking for things by words, but we're looking for them based upon the category of technology that they fit in. So if it's a can opener and they called it something else, it will be in the right category at the patent office. So we search using the patent office's facilities and 
when we search using the patent office's facilities, we're able to find the closest prior art. And so when you do your research, my recommendation is that if you want to do some initial research and look around on the internet and look for things that are similar, um, you, you might, by doing so, find that exactly your invention exists. And then, okay, it, it didn't take anything but some of your time to figure that out. But if you get to the point where you've looked and you've looked and you still haven't found it, you absolutely want to have the right type of research done before you jump into the patent process. So the key is always to find out the best prior art before you get into the patent process by doing the right type of searching. The next video is going to deal with the patent process.